Welcome everybody to the group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries at the Hanover Fair 2017. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody and also people watching uh, online. Uh, I hope you already have a drink or a refreshment. Uh, my name is Muriel Boakas and I would like to present Dr. Michael Faltenbacher, uh, he's team lead mobility of Thinkstep AG and will talk today about the new bus fuel project solving the challenges of large scale hydrogen refuel. This is part of the fuel cell and hydrogen joint undertaking of the European Union. So I welcome you on stage and I'm looking forward to your presentation. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. Thank you. Yes, uh, quick welcome from my side. It's really a pleasure and honor to, do, to be the first presentation in the technical forum here at the Hanover Fair. And as already introduced, I will talk today, uh, today about large-scale hydrogen refueling infrastructure with a specific application of buses in bus depots. This was a study uh, we have done um, for the fuel cell and joint undertaking as already announced and it's really about resolving the knowledge gap for establishing and, and putting together such a hydrogen refueling infrastructure since today we clearly still work with smaller fleet sizes so we are definitely below one ton per day and so the key challenges we were looking here in the study was really scale so excess one to six tons of hydrogen per day that we would be having the reliability demand for a public bus operator is obviously close to 100 percent or it's really 100 percent these vehicles need to pull out every morning so that's a crucial element there then of course a specialty uh, when comparing to other hydrogen refueling stations for passenger cars the usage of such a station is usually limited to four to six hours per day so it's really then we talk about however big the fleet size is this can be if we think in diesel terms up to 200 buses within six hours have to be refueled so it's really about throughput um, then uh, among, uh, very often we have pro issues around the footprint so we have limited space available in the bus depots they're really packed a lot of the times they're in urban environments so this is really also a challenge there that we have and then this is a little bit coming from the history or of a bus operator they like to have f enough fuel on site so we talk here about um, multi-day storage two to three days, three days is the usual size we talk with regard to how much uh, fuel you need to store on site. So if you start out with a one ton hydrogen uh, refueling stations, it's a minimum of two tons of hydrogen you want to store and this of course goes up. And then it's also about the business models around that. It's not the common system that you have. I have my diesel pump there, I'm refueling my, my, my diesel buses and everything is fine. So it's really, it's a new fuel, so it's also new partnerships, uh, new, new uh, companies involved in there. So, and it's also definitely new territory for the bus operators. And the fundamental thing or the general approach of the project, which was probably also the key success which we achieved with that project, was bring together really the experts from the hydrogen refueling pr uh, station providers the equipment manufacturers and the bus operators and really go into detail what is required if I want to refuel a large-scale hydrogen bus fleet. So it was really detailed design studies to be carried out for the individual partners. When we talk about the partners, who was involved there? 12 cities across Europe in seven different countries. Uh, I hope you can read it here, what we have everywhere from, from up in Oslo, Aberdeen, all the way down south to Madrid, uh, Bolzano in Italy were involved. Um, if we look at the technologies considered, uh, you can clearly see well, okay, I think I can leave the pointer out. So it's, uh, there was a, c a certain emphasis put on on-site electrolyzer technologies. Eight of the studies looked onto on-site electrolyzer um, hydrogen production there. Three used on-site steam methane reforming, and three had looked into a solution with hydrogen delivery, actually, to those studies. So that was a little bit the, the envelope we're talking about. So in general, I already mentioned it with the technology we're looking on. First, on-site generation technology where um, electrolysis units, 
Here, just an example from Wuppertal, um, which was carried out together with Hydrogenics. That's uh, for a six ton per day hydrogen refueling capacity, just how they look out. So this is specifically designed for Wuppertal already, so the dimensions are fitting. So this is something just to give an idea how it would look like. Just to give you an understanding, one ton a day, if you assume 25 kilograms of hydrogen per bus per day, will fuel you around 40 fuel cell buses. Of course, this will vary from city to city, application to application, but this will give you a, a bit of an idea how much we're talking. Here an example where we have a, even a combined uh, hydrogen supply, uh, uh, on-site hydrogen production route, it's with on-site electrolysis and steam reforming. This was the direct case for Madrid uh, to, to supply that here, and here we had a capacity of three tons a day. So each bus operator was free to choose the fleet sizes he had according to his individual ramp-up strategy. So, so this is why we have those varying capacities. So. Here, uh, an example for the hydrogen delivery, in this case, liquid hydrogen delivery. This is, of course, makes sense for space constraint um, um, depots. Um, so we have two vertically standing liquid hydrogen tanks there. This, what you see here, gives you an idea of the footprint of a 2.25 tons per day hydrogen refueling station. So the specific task of ThinkStep um, it was um, to really capture the key lessons learned from the individual design studies, so bring together the learnings from the 13 um, individual case studies carried out and provide the insights to the relevant stakeholders, the key stakeholders here being, of course, the bus operators, but also the equipment manufacturers and also the policy makers, obviously, to really um, uh, make and support this technology to get it off the ground. What we did was aggregate and also obviously there's quite some IP and, and uh, sensitive information involved there. So we also analyzed the data and brought it together and make it available in two public documents. These are available if you want to have a copy. I also have some exemplars here with me. You can also download it on the web page. will come later on. So the one is really give guidance to the project manager at a bus operator who is tasked to implement such a hydrogen refueling station so that he really has a little bit something like a cookbook, what he needs to do and what needs to be uh, thought about uh, when setting up such a hydrogen refueling station. And the second um, document was more focusing on decision makers giving the te techno-economic summary. So it's a little bit more the condensed version of that. Just to give you a little bit an idea about the requirements that were brought upon by the different operators. So it really starts with the different service characteristics that they have, the topography and climate conditions. Obviously, those influence the consumption, the hydrogen demand per day that you have there. Uh, then around cost economic applications, of course, what energy prices can I get in, in the different uh, countries uh, that I have. Space was already mentioned. Of course, the regulations, code and standards is, is a big topic. We talk seven, seven different European countries there, and y not yet we have like a uniform regulation and codes and standards landscape, unfortunately, across Europe. So that's also still some work to do. And obviously, a lot around those projects, getting such an infrastructure in place is about the political support you can get on the ground there. So. The good news about this, I guess it's a little bit uh, not giving away too much from the study, but it's for all the design size and requirements, there were specific solutions found with the technology that's available today. So there was nothing like we still need to develop that compression technology, that storage com technology. No, it was really the designs were carried out with today available technology uh, and implemented there. So, just to give you one example of the technical aspects, we looked upon, as I mentioned, more details in the reports. One classical was around the, the, the footprint uh, that we will ha be having. So, and that's also an example on how the results are presented. Of course, um, there is always quite a huge bandwidth because there is not that one silver bullet and that design layout that I have. But still, the idea of this document and of this project was really also to give indicative 
planning values to people approaching this topic maybe for the first time, get a feeling how much capacity, or in this case, how much footprint do I need if I want to set up um, a hydrogen refueling station with a certain capacity. So it was always, we have uh, many different uh, figures showing you um, dependency of the hydrogen refueling station capacity there on footprint, but also other aspects uh, that are required um, to have that there. Um, as you can see here, just in the example, it's uh, clearly that um, an on-site production, uh, which is of course I think makes clear sense, um, uh, needs about, or, or uh, the other way around, the delivery solution is 30% smaller than the on-site production route. So that's clearly something that needs to be considered early on. Do I have the space available there at my depot um, to have an on-site production, or maybe do I need to think about a near-site production, which also some of the studies did. Then, obviously, beside technical aspects, which I just gave you one example for, the economics uh, were a big uh, factor in there. Left-hand side now for an electrolyzer route. Top left corner you see for a one ton per day hydrogen refueling station. On the bottom side, a six ton per day. I don't want to get too much into the numbers now. It's because we don't have that time there. Um, but I'm happy if you have questions, you can see me about this later on. On the right-hand side, um, steam reformer. Um, technologies there again, one ton per day, six ton per day. You can clearly see the differences, how the capex goes down with the higher throughput that I'm having, but obviously I still have the more or less linear dependency on the energy prices that I'm having there. So it's really, you can go in there, so what's the natural gas price or the electricity price where I get? And you get a first indication where you come out uh, with your uh, hydrogen uh, production costs there. Then, after uh, technical and economic aspects, also the environmental aspects were looked upon. This is just an example. We did this for all seven participating uh, countries there. Here I'm just showing the European average and also the German average, what you can see. And obviously it's clear from the graph that you can see here on the, we have here the CO2 equivalents per kilogram of hydrogen, that you definitely need uh, renewable energies, that you get a low hydrogen footprint on your hydrogen supply for that. And obviously, this is one of the key motivations uh, also for the operators and, and cities and communities to, to implement such, such a technology. Um, as, um, so the overall lowest GHG emissions I get through the electrolysis route. But then again, obviously, I need to re use renewable energy so I can get as low as uh, 0.4 um, kilograms CO2 equivalent per kilogram of hydrogen. On the other side of, of, of the um, bandwidth or range I'm getting here, if I use a German national grid mix, I go as far up as 37 kilograms of hydrogen per C. So this just gives you a, a, a feeling on how important it is. The dotted lines you see here um, refers to the certify projects that implemented also already a guidance, a guideline on how uh, to certify, get a guarantee of origin on your hydrogen. So this is also worked upon in parallel on a European level that it's made sure um, what's the benchmark value. In this case, it's 10.9 kilograms of CO2 from a steam reformer unit. And uh, to that uh, scheme, to be a low GHG emission in hydrogen, you need to be below 4.4 kilograms uh, of CO2 equivalent. This is to be noted without compression, so you can add something for the compression on top there. The target costs and achieved there was they started out with four to six euros uh, per kilogram. Um, for most of the studies, you can uh, see the rest uh, inside on the lower left corner. Actually, achieving that, we managed for three of the studies, so there is still room for improvement, but clearly it was also one of the aims of the study to understand where do we need to work upon to really get uh, there. So in all, obviously what will also help in the future, if we have increased fuel efficiency from the fuel cell buses, then this doesn't hurt as much that we will be getting there. 
And then I want to close with the recommendations we derived for the three stakeholders group, bus operators, policymakers, and industry. And maybe just to give you one example uh, for the bus operators, it's really about understanding the fundamental differences because everybody started out. It was really interesting to see across all the studies. They come from a diesel background. And when you're used to on how you handle your diesel buses and refuel them uh, with um, diesel, it's really a bit of work to do. You you need to have some flexibility also just in your minds. You've got to think outside the box on how can I make this possible and workable if I use hydrogen as a fuel that I had. And also it's about the flexibility from the HRS designs and its operations um, so that I can really give flexibility to the manufacturing producers that I may prescribe them what I want to have, but don't go too much into the technical details to exclude any potential feasible solution there. So it's really wise to give them some flexibility there. And then there were a heap of other things. It's really about the uh, initial fleet size. So minimum of 10 to 20 vehicles turned out to be a reasonable fleet size that it really makes sense to implement something like that. Then reliability, of course, is a big thing. Keep the balance between that. And the biggest thing with regard to costs, obviously, is around the OPEX um, to have that um, there. So that is just to give you a little bit of feeling about that. We also have that for the policymakers. But with, when looking at the time, I won't go into too much details. As I said, it's all in the studies here. What's to be done there? Clearly, the regulators can do something about the additional costs of electricity, for, as one example, to be shown there. So that's the last slide. Wrapping it up, I get the feeling there. So really, what we have achieved, we provided a guidance document for um, project managers to on how can I approach the topic on implementing such a hydrogen refueling station and also for decision makers give a techno-economic summary with recommendations what can be improved to make this even more feasible. So thank you very much for your attention. If you have more questions, feel free. Thank you very much. Um, looking at the time, there are not so much time for questions, <laughs> but since you're available afterwards, yeah. Uh, I think you can get him. Maybe one question, if there is any, or you can save it for later. <laughs> okay. Okay. Great. Then thank you very Th much for your time, Dr. Kalkbacher. Thank you. Thank you. So we will continue with the next presentation in about five minutes. Um, it will be with Dr. So, uh, I'm sorry. Sure. organize myself a little bit better. A <laughs> it will be about compact diesel yeah, you, you, fuel process systems and SOFC generators.